Now it's not a secret, I am not a fan of the contrast slider no matter what software you're using to edit your photos. I've made tons of short videos on this in the past and why I don't use the contrast slider at all. I want to take a little bit more time on a longer form video today to show you why I completely ditched the contrast slider and what I use instead, which is called the tone curve, and exactly how this curve works so that you too can ditch that contrast slider and instead use the tone curve, which works so, so much better. I've got a couple examples today. I'm using Lightroom Classic, but if you're using Lightroom, Photoshop, or honestly any other photo editing software out there on the market, they should all have some sort of curve. In Photoshop, this is just called Curves. In Lightroom, it's called the Tone Curve. Uh, Lightroom Classic is the Tone Curve, and other different softwares call it a different thing, but something along the lines of a curve, and I'll show you exactly how that works. Now let's jump in to Lightroom Classic here and talk about this image. So we've got the tone curve here. First, I wanna show you why the contrast slider is not a good choice for this particular photo. So if I go in here and I add contrast, you can see I kinda like what it's doing to the sky, but it's just crushing the foreground. This dark foreground just looks awful. And you could go in here and maybe adjust the shadows and the blacks, but I'm already at maximum on both. And so I am not gonna do that, and instead I'm gonna use the tone curve to dial in my contrast in the image. Now, before I show you exactly how to use this, let's talk about what the tone curve is and how it works. Now, if you're in Lightroom or Lightroom Classic, you're gonna be starting on what's called the parametric curve like this. You're not gonna have as many options in terms of what you can do with it as you do in what's called the point curve. Um, in my opinion, this parametric curve is kind of like the tone curve, but on training wheels. Um, so I like to use the point curve, which is completely freehand, and that's gonna give you a lot better results. So what you see here is a graph. This graphs the pixels in your image where, they're, where it's darker. You can see there's more pixels on the left side than there is in the center or even on the right. This represents a graph of lightness to darkness with the very far left side being completely black and dark. Right side is completely white and bright. Now, a lot of people get too hung up with these uh, details in the graph here. Don't worry about the pixels back here. Honestly, this isn't even something that I really think about, but I just wanted to tell you what that is in case you were curious. All you need to worry about is the curve. Now the curve adjusts pixels based on where they lie on that graph. So if I was to adjust from the very bottom left, it's going to adjust the darks more than the lights. But with only one point, you can see it's gonna affect the whole image because the whole graph is moving. But that's where placing multiple points can come into handy. So what I recommend doing for people that are new to the curve, and even for myself, this is what I pretty much do, is before you start, just create two more points on your curve. And you're gonna create it at where these bottom two lines in the bottom left corner meet, just click, and then on the top right in the same spot, but where the top, uh, top right box, just like that. Now you'll see if I adjust this, you can see I can really reef on some of the darker areas here, and I'm not having that much effect at anything at the top of my photo. So you're probably wondering how in the heck does this replace the contrast slider? And I'm gonna show you exactly how you add contrast here with this tool. So all you're gonna do is create a simple S-curve. Maybe you've heard of an S-curve before. And an S-curve is where you drag this bottom point down and you drag the top point up. Now if I toggle this, you can see how that has created some contrast in the image, but it still looks pretty bad. So how exactly am I gonna dial this in? Well, one thing that I like about the tone curve, unlike the regular contrast slider, which adjusts the image in such a way that the bright pixels are brightened by the same amount the dark pixels are darkened, the tone curve is completely customizable to every single image. So here with this tone curve, I can really pop the brights while not really adjusting the darks all that much. So I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna just drag this up because I don't wanna darken the darks too much, but I am okay to drag this point up and really pop the brights. So now you can see the brights are really getting the full treatment here, whereas our darks are just getting darkened just a little bit. Now, one more trick that I'll show you here in the curve is this bottom left and top right point is called the blacks and the whites point. And the blacks point basically tells Lightroom what the very darkest pixel can look like in the image. So if I drag this up, you can see it starts to make things look matte because it's making the dark darkest pixel in the image this exact level of gray, which obviously that doesn't look good. Now the uh, whites point is the same. As you drag it down, you know, you start to wash out the whites. 
I almost never touch the white's point, so don't worry too much about that. But what I do use all the time is this black's point. And a lot of people really sleep on this and don't use this, but this is a great way to bring back some detail in the photo. So we've added our contrast here. Let's say that's about where we want it, but our darks are still dark. Sure, go back up into the shadows or blacks if you want, but why do that when you could just adjust the blacks point, which is gonna soften the darks in the image. So as I just bring this up a little bit, and I don't wanna go too far because it starts to look washed out, but I'll bring this up and you can look at the output number. I typically don't do more than 10, somewhere just like that. And I'll maybe adjust that point again. Now that's maybe a lot better for the contrast in my image. And you can go in and make adjustments as you see fit. You can create more points, but I highly recommend against creating additional points on your graph here. That's kind of more advanced, something that I don't even really do because uh, I don't really find it necessary. So rather than creating more points, just adjust the points that you already are given, which is mainly going to be this point here and this point here. And that's going to give you the best results in my opinion. Now, before we move to the next photo, I'll talk briefly about the colors here. This is just using the tone curve to add colors into the image. Not something I use a lot, but occasionally I'll do something like come in here and I will bring my darks towards blue and my lights towards yellow uh, just to create a little bit of tonality in the photo. Again, that's not something that I usually like doing a lot. You can see it doesn't really look good there. So typically not something that I would recommend, but if you were curious, that is what those do. But typically I stay in this white circle here, which is our point curve. Now let's look at this on one more image and see how this works. Again, we'll go in, we'll show you the contrast slider, not looking good. That mousse is getting too dark. Sure, go in and adjust the shadows or blacks if you want, but it's still not gonna give you the best results. So instead we're gonna use this tone curve. You can see our graph looks much, much different here because we've got all these really light pixels on that very far right side. Let's create our two points and just create our simple S curve. And then we can go in and make adjustments. I'm gonna bring this blacks point up first before I do anything crazy. You can see that just brings back a little bit of detail on our moose there. Then I can adjust these around until I find where I want them to be. Now you also may find that maybe you want to just leave the highlights as is. So drag it back to that original baseline. And now we're not really popping the highlights, but we are creating contrast because we're darkening those darks. Fully customizable to every scene. And you can see if we adjust the whites point on a photo like this where there's a little bit blown out, which again is totally fine for a wildlife photo, I think, to have this blown out in the background. But you can drag this down to maybe bring back some detail in there. Or I like to drag it to the left, which kind of punches it. You can see you go too far and it starts to look bad. But you can punch those colors just a little bit by using that whites point. So creating that graph, you can see we didn't even really create an S curve. We just created kind of like a U curve there and that has really added some nice, nice contrast to the scene. So I literally use this tool on every single one of my photos. I do not use the contrast slider unless I'm just looking for something quick and dirty to show an example. But otherwise, when I'm actually editing my photos for real, I will use this tool every single time because the tone curve is like contrast, but on steroids. It gives you fully customizable options to fully customize the contrast in every scene. And very, very seldom do I find that a scene looks good when the darks are darkened just as much as the brights are brightened, which is the contrast slider. Almost every scene you're gonna wanna maybe darken the darks more or less than you're gonna wanna brighten the brights. So this is the tool for you when you want to do that. So give the tone curve a try or the curves tool or whatever you are gonna use this in, whatever they call it, give it a try. If you have other questions about it, let me know. I try to make this video quick and straight to the point, but if you do have more questions or you want something more in depth, let me know. But that's literally everything that I usually teach people and that I think that you need to know about that tone curve. So if you guys like this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. All my videos are straightforward and to the point. I appreciate you guys being here so much. Thank you so much for your like, your anger, comment. Love to hear from you guys and love when you guys help me to grow my channel. Thank you guys so much. Now, my name is Austin James Jackson. Thank you so much for joining me today. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.